So good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a series of talks that are highlighting the energy related research in the Hildebrand Department of Petroleum and Geo Systems Engineering at UT. I'll have a few introductory slides before we get going. This is basically the folks that are involved in it. Uh, there's not much time to introduce, introduce everybody uh, individually, but they're there and you, you, can, you can get in touch with any of them by going through the uh, uh, the UT directory. So here's the research in CSEE and the what you're seeing there is distribution of the interests, disciplines, the engineering tools. And this is this basically is a, is indicates the diversity of the research being done here. And uh, also, if there's anything that you see in this presentation or or anything that you just happen to think of, there's several industrial affiliate programs at UT. And uh, you see the names right there. Uh, if you are interested in joining or know somebody that might be interested in joining, uh, please uh, contact us and we can put you in touch with the right person. And then one of our ways of getting information out to the public is through these monthly seminars. So webinars rather, uh, they are industry driven research webinars and they are research by researchers and collaborators at the at the center uh, it's second Tuesday of each month and uh, they are uploaded to the UT channel within a few days after the seminar where you can actually go back and review what's said uh, the two up, upcoming ones that are no on no up of April 11 is Marco Machado and uh, May 9th is Nicholas Espinoza at UT <coughs> Of course, the questions will arise, and if you have any questions, please post, post them in the question and answer section, and our speaker will answer as many as we have time uh, for today. So our speaker today is uh, Leo Maraji Ruiz. Ruiz Maraji, uh, when I first started uh, at the uh, University of Texas many years ago, somebody asked me what, what would happen to you if you uh, if you had a student who was actually smarter than you were. And at first I was kind of appalled at the idea, but then I realized that it's actually a good thing. And Leo falls in that category. He's a fairly recent graduate of the University of Texas, smarter than me, and has a very interesting uh, topic uh, today. So Leo, please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Lake, for the nice introduction. And in this presentation, I am going to illustrate a technique that allows us to incorporate variable pressure effects to any decline curve model. And we are going to state why we need to do this. And we are going also to show examples, application examples for tight oil and shale gas wells. For further details about this work, you can also see this 2023 YourTech paper. So first of all, let me acknowledge the people that are involved in this work. Professor Larry Lake, Dr. Mark Walsh, Professor Frank Mail, and Professor Michael Marler. So now we start the presentation. We are going to start simple. So what is the Klein curve analysis? We imagine that we have the production for a, an oil wall. And this plot shows the oil rate versus time, and the oil production is represented by the green dots. So the idea here is that we are going to use a model that is a decline car model to history match the production of this wall, and we are going to extrapolate that behavior into the future to answer two main questions, how much oil we are going to get and how fast we are going to get it we see that the oil production is a function of time. So this decline curve model is a function of time and also a function of some parameters that we denote with X. But what could be the problems with decline curve analysis? Continuing with the same example, here we see the history match of the wall. But let's say that at year three, we lower the pressure the flowing pressure of this well, that is 4,000 PSI, and we lower to 2,000 PSI. In that case, we increase the driving force. 
So the oil rate will go up and our future production estimates from the model will be incorrect. This happens because the production rate is a function of time, but it's also a function of the reservoir pressures. And reservoir pressures, I mean the initial reservoir pressure and the bottom hole flowing pressure. So why we need to incorporate variable pressure effects to the Klein car models? Because all the Klein car models assume constant bottom hole flowing pressure conditions. They are just a function of time. If we apply these models, considering the variations in the pressures, that might lead to inaccurate flow regime identification if we are using this model to characterize the flow regime, inaccurate estimation of the model parameters because we are not considering the variations in the pressures, and also inaccurate estimate ultimate recovery, how much oil or gas we are going to get. This slide is from the last ray transient analysis workshop of the SP. And here we are showing the research topics of discussions from that meeting. And one of the research topics in that meeting was the link between ray transient analysis, that is the analysis of pressures, rates, and time, and the claim curve analysis. That is the analysis of right uh, of rate and time, how they connect, and if it's possible to have a method that incorporates pressure into the Klein car models. That is what is this presentation is about. So understanding the big picture of this, the goal of this presentation, we will have a Klein car model that is a function of time and lives on a constant pressure domain. Here we see the decline car model. And we want to apply this decline car model to history match and forecast the production of oil and gas wells that usually live on a variable pressure drop domain. As we can see here, for changing flowing pressures, we will have change, changes in the oil rate. One way to do this is to apply the time superposition principle. That is this equation over here. This equation have, uh, has our decline curve models and also has the pressure changes for each time step. So we are going to apply this equation to try to history match a real oil well and see what happens. So this slide presents a history match of an oil well with a decline curve model. We see the oil rate is represented by the green dots and the brown diamonds are the flowing pressure history. The history match for, with the decline curve model is shown by the dash blue lines. We see that this history match looks horrible. So we wonder what happened applying that equation. Long story short, what happens are data issues. And by data issues, I mean that we have incorrect estimates in the flowing pressures. Maybe we don't have exactly the initial reservoir pressure for this well. And we can also have rate and pressure inconsistencies, such as the flowing pressure goes up and also the rate goes up. That cannot happen. That will lead to poor history matches with our models. So the goal of this work is to present a fast and simple approach that can incorporate variable pressure effects into any decline curve model, but also needs to handle these data issues, such as incorrect estimates of the flowing pressure, incorrect initial reservoir pressure, and rate flowing pressure inconsistencies. And why we want to do that? Because we want to improve the decline car models production history match and forecast of unconventional or conventional wells. 
So this method is applicable to both conventional and unconventional reservoirs. So now we are going to present the validation of this method with a synthetic case. And for the synthetic case, we are going to use the one dimensional single phase solution of the diffusivity equation for a slightly compressible fluid. This solution represents the behavior of an ideal hydrofracture world that has evenly spaced planar fractures. The rate solution of the diffusivity equation looks like this in a log log plot. And this is the rate and has two different behaviors. At early times, we see a linear decay that is characteristic of semi-infinite semi acting behavior or transient linear flow. At late times, we see an exponential decay that is characteristic of boundary dominated flow. This is the decline curve model that we are going to use for the validation of our method. As we can see, this decline curve model has only two parameters, a hydrocarbon pore volume, BP, that tell us how much oil is present in the system. And in this case, we fix that to one million barrels. And a characteristic time tau that tell us how fast we are going to produce or deplete this well. And it's also related to the time of end of linear flow. In this case, we set this parameter to four years. So that is when the, the flow rate is bending and decaying exponentially. So we are going to apply this model with a pressure history to generate a variable pressure oil rate. In this plot, we see the variable pressure oil rate represented by the green dots here. And this is the bottom hole flowing pressure history that we, we use to generate this rate that is shown by the horizontal CN lines. So we are going to validate our method, but for that we are going to introduce an error in the initial reservoir pressure that is 7,000, uh, but we are going to input an incorrect initial reservoir pressure of 8,000 PSI. And we are also going to input to our method incorrect bottom hole flowing pressures represented by the brown diamonds in this uh, in this plot. As you can see, the noise or the errors are up to 45% in relation to the horizontal CN lines. So the goal of our method is to get the history match of this variable pressure oil rate history to correct for this incorrect input of the initial reservoir pressure and to also correct for the input of this noisy bottom hole flowing pressure. We want to correct initial reservoir pressure and correct the bottom hole flowing pressure. Why we want to do that? Because when we face real production data, we will have problems with the estimates of the initial reservoir pressure and the flowing pressure history. This slide presents the results of the method showing the rate history match and the correcting bottom hole flowing pressure and the initial reservoir pressure. The oil rate history match with the model is shown by the dashed blue curve here. We also see the corrected initial reservoir pressure represented by the dashed magenta line that is 7,000 PSI. And we plot the corrected bottom hole flowing pressure from the method in the dotted blue lines 
we see that agrees with the true bottom hole flow in pressure history. We compare the true initial reservoir pressure and mold parameters and the estimated from our method. The initial reservoir pressure was 7,000 PSI and the one estimated from our method is 6,950, an error that is less than 1%. If we compare the pore volume and characteristic time parameters, the pore volume was 1 million barrels and the estimated from the method is a 90, almost 1 million barrels with an error less than 1%. The characteristic time was four years and the estimated one is 4.01. So we can estimate these essential or key parameters with less than 2% error. If we just compare the same model without accounting for the variable pressure drop effects, we see that we cannot history match the oil production history. This is the same 1D single phase solution, just at constant pressure conditions, shown by the red dotted line. And if we see the parameters that we get from this history match, the errors the errors uh, in comparison with the true and input parameters are up to almost 400%. So we show that this method works for a synthetic case. But how about for tight oil wells? So for tight oil wells, we are going to illustrate the application of this methodology for 3D clanker models. The first one is the model that we use for the validations of the method. That is the one dimensional single phase, a slightly compressible fluid model. It has this shape and has two fitting parameters, a hydrocarbon per volume that tells us how much oil is present and a characteristic time that tells us how fast we are going to deplete the reservoir. We are going to show the application example for an empirical model, the logistic growth model. This model was developed for unconventional wells, and it has three main parameters. And finally, we are also going to apply the ARPS hyperbolic equation. This is one of the most popular decline models used by reservoir engineers and has three fitting parameters, an initial rate, in an initial rate, an initial decline rate, and a B parameter. For this presentation, we are going to constrain the B values between zero and two. And the idea here is we are going to show the history match, the production forecast, and the model parameters for each model and compare the results using our pressure rate time method and just using rate time analysis. So let's go and present tight oil wells and compare these models under variable pressure effects and constant pressure. So for well number one, this plot shows the oil rate versus time history of a well, well number one, represented by the green dots. And we are also plotting the flowing pressure that we read on the right axis. As you can see, the flowing pressure shown in the, in the brown diamonds is slowly decreasing with time. That makes the rate almost fairly constant. This slide compares the 1D single phase model using pressure rate time data shown by the dash blue curve and just the fit of the same model using only rate time data represented by the dash red line. In addition, our method also estimates the flowing pressure 
for this world. And in this case, we see that we have a, an agreement between the measured flowing pressure in the brown diamonds and the one estimated from the method shown by the dotted blue line. You can say, okay, the history match using pressure rate time and only rain time data, they really look alike. That's fine. Okay, let's go and see about the production forecast of this model. So this slide presents and compares the production model, the production forecast of this 1D single phase flow model using only ray time data shown by the red curve and the production forecast using pressure rate time data shown by the dashed blue curve. As you can see, there is a huge difference in the production forecast between these two analyses. So the rate time model will give a larger production forecast in comparison to the method that incorporates variable pressure effects. This slide compares the model parameters and 20 EUR estimates for this model. You can see here, this is the pressure rate time analysis, and this is only using rate time data. And we see large differences in the estimates of the model parameters, hydrocarbon per volume and characteristic time, and also the 20 year EUR, how much oil we are going to recover after 20 years. is a 200% difference. You know, rate time analysis will give larger EUR values in this case for this model. Now we are going to uh, continue to analyze the same well, but with the logistic growth model. And this slide shows the comparison of the history match of the logistic growth model using the pressure rate time method shown by the magenta lines and using only rate time data shown by the red curve. In addition, our method will estimate the flowing pressure for this well, and we see that it coincides with the measured flowing pressure represented by the brown diamonds. As you can see here, the history matches really look alike, and we don't see clear difference. So let's see the production forecast for this well. If we compare the production forecast, using the logistic growth model, using rate time data and pressure rate time data, we also see that the production forecast is higher using only rate time data than the one using or accounting for variable pressure effects shown by the dash magenta lines. This slide compares the model parameters and also the UR estimates for this model using our method that includes variable pressure and only using the rate time data. And in this case, we also see large difference in the model parameter estimates, but not a large difference in the 20 year UR estimate. Now let's compare the ARPS hyperbolic model fit for this well. The ARPS hyperbolic fit using our variable pressure methodology is shown by the dash a black line. And the fit of the ARPS hyperbolic using just rate time data is represented by the dash red line. Our method also estimate the flowing pressure for this well and showing the dotted a black line and it coincides with the measured flowing pressure shown by the brown diamonds. Similar case, we don't see a difference in the history match, but let's look at the production forecast and compare these two approaches. So when we look into the future production and the forecast, we also see that using only rate time data, 
will lead to a larger future production estimate in comparison to the one that incorporates variable bottom hole flow in pressure effects. This slide compares the ARPS hyperbolic parameters and EUR estimates using our variable pressure methodology and only using rate time data. Three main important things to notice in this slide. First, the initial re decline rate parameter is larger when using pressure rate time data in comparison to rate time analysis. In addition, the V value of the ARPS hyperbolic equation is lower in comparison with rate time analysis. And consequently, this means that when we incorporate variable pressure effects for this well, we will have a faster decline. And that will lead to a lower EUR, as we can see in this case, almost 40% difference. Now we are going to present another world and we are going to compare, to compare these three decline curve models. So this is a very interesting world for the following reason. The oil rate, as you can see here, represented by the green dots, is fairly constant. Why is that? Because the flow in pressure is slowly decreasing with time, as you can see here. So if we are using the single phase flow model, just or only with rate and time data, we cannot fit this model to the production rate. However, if we incorporate the variable flow in pressure effects, we can really do a really good job in history matching the world. As you can see here, the model with variable pressure effects represented by the dash blue curve. Let's compare the same model, but the production forecast looking at the future. We saw that we didn't do a good job in the history matching using ray time data. Uh, so the future production estimate will be wrong. In contrast, we did a really good job history matching this world with the model accounting for the variable pressure effects. And we can see clear difference in the future production forecast. When we compare the parameters and 20 year EUR for this well using variable pressure effects and only ray time data, we see really large differences in terms of the pore volume, characteristic time, and EUR. We see that the EUR, including these variable pressure effects, is lower than the EUR that we get using ray time analysis, almost 300%. Let's analyze this well using the logistic growth model and compare the performance with the variable pressure effects and just ray time data. So we are showing the same well, but the analysis with the logistic growth model with only ray time data is represented by the red a dash line and the analysis using variable pressure effects is shown by the dash magenta line. We can see that the history match accounting for this variable pressure effects is way better than the history match only using ray time data that is almost flat. Similarly, we compare the production forecast using the logistic growth model with only rate ta time analysis and with our method that includes variable pressure effects. You can see the forecast using the variable pressure effects is lower than the one only using rate time data. We see large difference in the model parameter estimates and the 20 year EUR. You can see here almost 100% different 
difference estimate in the 20 year UR for this one. And finally, we are going to compare the performance of the ARPS hyperbolic model for this well, you accounting for variable pressure effects and only rate time data. The rate time analysis using ARPS is shown by the red dash curve. While the analysis of the ARPS hyperbolic equation, including for variable pressure effects, is shown by the dash black lines. You can see that the fit using rate time data is not as good as the one as we get, including for the variable pressure effects. So now we compare the production forecast using the ARPS hyperbolic model with rate time analysis shown by the dash red line and the method that incorporates these variable pressure drop effects. Once again, we see that the production forecast is more conservative using the method than the one that we get using rate time analysis. Similar story, if we compare the model parameters, three main things to see. The initial decline rate using pressure rate time data is larger than the one using rate time analysis. The B value is lower for the pressure rate time data in comparison to rate time analysis. And that will say that our well decline is faster when we include for the variable pressure effects. And that will lead to a lower 20 year UR estimate. And in this case, the difference is about 400%. So for shale gas wells, we need to modify this method uh, accounting for pseudo variables, such as pseudo pressures. And we are going to show the application for one decline curve model. And then the decline curve model that we are going to use for shale gas wells is the 1D single phase multi-component fluid solution of the diffusivity equation. This is a numerical model that represents the behavior of hydrofracture wells that have evenly spaced planar fractures. And this is the analogous solution that we get in terms of the constant pressure rate for this uh, type of numerical model. And we are going to compare the results of the application of this model using our method that incorporates variable pressure and just using this model with rate time data, as we saw for the tight oil wells. So let's compare the performance of this model, including pressure and without the inclusion of pressure. So this is one shale gas well from the Haynesville formation. And we can see for this well that the flowing pressure shown by the brown diamonds is changing a lot. You know, it has spikes, it's constant and going down. This makes the flow rate shown by the red dots very noisy and very scattered behavior. And we are going to compare the model history match using the pressure that is shown by the dash blue lines. That we can see that we get a really good history match of the model by the incorporation of the pressure and the history match of the model just using the gas rate and time. That we can clearly not history match of this well because of the changes in the flowing pressure history. We are going to compare this model production forecast just using rate time data shown by the magenta line. We couldn't fit or history match the production of this well. And using our variable pressure method, as you can see here. Once again, when we include the variable pressure effects, we will get a more conservative production forecast.
this slide presents the comparison of the parameters and 20 year and recovery factor estimates for these wells using our variable pressure method and just rate time analysis. Once again, we see huge difference in the model estimates in terms of the characteristic time, the original gas in place parameter, 20 year EUR and gas recovery factor. For instance, accounting for the pressure, the gas recovery factor is about 60%. And if we just use rate time analysis, this is 40%. So this value is super low for a gas wall. And this is a more realistic estimate. So we present a deterministic methodology to account for variable pressure effects and also correct for inconsistencies in the data such as incorrect initial reservoir pressure and errors in the bottom hole flowing pressure. But how about accounting for uncertainty, doing a probabilistic forecast, a probabilistic history match and forecast of these wells. So we can incorporate to this methodology patient inference. And the idea here with patient inference is that our models parameters will be a distribution. So we can account for the uncertainty in our model parameters, the production history match, and the forecast. So the idea is like, we are going to estimate the distribution of our model parameters X, and that will give you, that will give us an uncertainty quantification using Bayes' theorem. So now we illustrate the results of the application of the inclusion of Bayesian inference to our method to get probabilistic history match. And this shows the, the dash blue lines shows the probabilistic history match for a well using this 1D single phase uh, dry gas model. And the cool thing about this is that our parameter estimates won't be just a number. They will be a distribution. So we will have a distribution for our, our original gas in place parameter. We will have a distribution for our characteristic time parameter. And if we have the basic completion uh, parameters for our well, we can also estimate the distribution for the fracture half length in our world and also the effective permeability. This is another well example. In here we show the probabilistic history matches for this well and also the distributions of our model parameters, original gas in place, characteristic time, and then we have the completion parameters for the well, we can also estimate fracture half length and effective permeability. So in conclusion, we presented a fast and robust method that is able to incorporate variable pressure effects to any decline curve model. This method also estimates or gives an estimate of the initial reservoir pressure and a consistent bottom hole flowing pressure history. We saw for the tight oil and shale gas wells that when we compare different declanker models accounting for variable pressure and only using rate time data, the variable pressure method will constrain or will give more conservative estimates of our model parameters and future production. And we also included a way to account for the uncertainty of the production forecast and our model estimates. I would like to thank to the SP bleeding edge of RT8 for making available the data that we show in this presentation. My boss Lorena Moscardelli and I would like to thank the State of Texas Advanced Resource Recovery Program at the Bureau of Economic Geology for partially funding this work. 
Thank you for your time, and I am happy to answer any questions that you may have. In the examples of slide three, is the BHP the forecast assumed constant should apply then a decline curve model factor for the a decline factor to the forecast of the bottom hole pressure? Yes, uh, in the examples that we presented, and since this method is accounting for variable pressure effects, we need to put a flowing pressure history into the future. And the idea here is we compare the decline curve model, rate time analysis that uses constant pressure, and our variable pressure effects, we are held in constant the flowing pressure into the future. So you can do different sensitivities, and if you know how you operate your wells, you will have a prediction of that bottom hole flowing pressure, but the method needs to put a history into the future to do the forecast. So for shale oil wells, your cases show ARPS B values between 0.6 and 1.15 approximate. Any recommendation of a B value to use for the ARPS equation? So essentially, yes, and um, we constrain the B values between 0 and 2. And the idea was to show in these cases that when you include the pressure effects, your B value accounting for those variable pressure, not only the B value, but the initial decline rate, the initial recline rate using variable pressure will be higher and also the B value will be lower. We are not stating anything about the B values, but the, the goal was to show that your estimates with the variable pressure effects will increase the initial decline rate and will lower the B values. So those wells are more transitioning to boundary dominated flow. As I understand your work, you can add bottom hole flow in pressure data for any decline representation. Can you make some general statement as to whether the estimated ultimate recovery is increased or decreased compared with the estimate without bottom hole flow in pressure effects? Yes, you get the, the you get the idea right. The idea is to incorporate variable bottom hole flow in pressures to any decline curve model. And as we can see here, the general rule, the EURs will be lower for these wells that have variable pressure using this method in comparison to rate time analysis. If you have a well that has a fairly constant bottom hole flow in pressures, the method will give similar results to rate time analysis. But in the cases that I presented that we have a slowly decreasing bottom hole flow in pressure, usually the URs will be more conservative accounting for those variable pressure effects. Does the model assume normal pressure depression from an initial value as a function of a specific original oil in place or gas in place? What about reservoir with pressure support? That's a good question. And this method is essentially developed for primary recovery purposes. So the oil rate or gas well uh, or gas rate is essentially driven by the pressure drop. So essentially it's only taken into consideration that, but can be expanded, you know, for we are trying to expand this method for water flooding or water influ influx effects. Is this the first time that DP is being included to any, I think is pressure drop is being included to any decline curve mold. My lack of acknowledge in DCA. I suppose this work has been published already. Can you share some publication of this work, please? Any chance we can have this slide? Yes, as I show in the first slide, this, this work is going to be available in the YouTube channel of the subsurface energy center and the environment and we show in the first slide let me share with you the 
your tech paper numbers for this um, for this presentation. One second. So this work is going to be published in these two your tech papers. So you would like to go and see the details of the work in in these two your tech numbers. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Leo, for your presentation. Excellent work. Can your method apply to multi-phase flow effects, let's say oil and gas, where currently we start simple, so we are only using single phase uh, effects. You can also do a ratio history match. If you have the oil production and gas oil ratio, you can do the history match of the gas or the water oil ratio. You can also do the history match of the water. But we are expanding this work into multi-phase uh, flow effects. Where did you get the concept of the product of total compressibility and poor volume in your equation? I believe uh, um, you are referring to the um, to the solution of the slightly compressible fluid. So the idea is we are when we solve the diffusivity equation, we are lumping the parameters. So let me go back to the presentation and share with you the share with you the slide that has the product of the compressibility and uh, the pore volume. One second. This slide. So essentially, this is the single phase solution uh, of the diffusivity equation for a, a, a slightly compressible fluid, and we can cast this solution in dimensionless form. So this is a dimensionless term, and this comes from dimensional analysis. So the idea of the pore volume is a lamp parameter that accounts for just the volume the pore volume in the system. That is four times the porosity, uh, the total number of fracture clusters, the net pay or fracture height, the fracture half length, and the half distance between fracture clusters. So this is a lamp parameter, and that's why it's the, um, it's the product of the total compressibility and pore volume. We want to cast this equation with only two parameters because they are related of answering two important questions in reservoir engineering. That is how much oil is present and the characteristic time it tell us how fast the, the well depleted with time. So those are the questions that we usually want to address. But you can cast uh, this equation in a different way or more traditional way with more parameters. But essentially it's the same. Could it be possible to include variable skin to the model, considering that the bottom hole flowing pressure could decrease because multiple reasons and the oil rate would not increase? Yeah, I, you have to, to input that into the model and you can account for, for a skin effect. That could be easily done. I, I would like to thank you for your time and interest in the presentation and uh, full details of the presentation will be available in this your tech papers. Um, this presentation is recorded so you can uh, watch it again in YouTube. Thank you so much for your time.